Long ago, the siblings Pier, Av, and Hill were challenged by Kazah, the spirit of the void, to each create something the others could neither match nor destroy. Pier created fire, which exploded outward and burned Hill. To stop it, Av created water, which quickly snuffed out Pier's fire. Hill, the wisest of the three, realized Kazah's true intent was to destroy the three of them in competition. Hill suggested instead that they create via cooperation and thereby thwart Kazah's plan. Hill had Peer and Av create their fire and water again, but this time when the two touched, Hill fused them into earth. All were so impressed with this combined effort that they pushed further. Av created more water, and they set the newly formed earth afloat in it. Peer created more fire and set it in the sky above as the sun, while Hill shaped the earth into ten islands, one for each month of the year. They took up residence in Zamo, the holy central island, and Peer filled its main mountain with lava. The fires of Zamo power the great kilns the smiths now use to refine their metalworking skills. The siblings soon realized that while their creation was beautiful, it lacked dynamism and the potential for growth. Hill noticed that Pier's volcano released smoke, and the heat of the lava caused some of Ob's water to float away. So Hill took the smoke and the water vapor and shook them together in the sky, causing a great storm. The elements of Pier and Av came tumbling back down to the earth in the form of rain, causing rivers and pools to form. The storms also brought lightning, and where it struck, life sprang forth. The first strike created the plants. The second strike made the sea creatures. On the third strike, birds, mammals, and other land animals appeared. On the fourth strike, humans were made. Kazaa grew angry upon seeing how the siblings had avoided the trap laid for them and corrupted the lightning so it would never create again. As the fifth bolt landed, it struck some of the sea creatures, sending them into a rage. These leviathans attempted to destroy every living thing around them. Unwilling to harm their creation, the siblings set up a protective barrier around the islands, keeping the leviathans out. This is why we use air gliders for inter-island transit. Only the older smiths, with their great training and courage, can handle the dangers of the water and the long periods of isolation from community that come with boating. So they operate ferries, moving goods between islands and those individuals who cannot travel by glider. The siblings realized they must imprison Kazah to ensure no further harm befell their creation. Pier sent a volley of fire, which Hill caused to harden around Kazah. Hill then lifted this solid orb into the sky, where it became the moon. Av sent up sparkling droplets of water, which Pier set ablaze as stars. These became Kazah's eternal guardians and companions. At the start of each month, when Kazah's face is fully revealed, each island holds a sacred bonfire celebration. The bonfire is when we offer thanks to Pier, Av, and Hill for the creation of the world and remember the banishment of Kazah. Doing so also helps ease Kazah's isolation in the hope that one day Kazah will understand the joy that comes from being in community. Then, at the midpoint of the month, when Kazah's face is hidden from us, we observe the stargazing meditation. This is a time when each village comes together following the evening meal to damp down the communal fire to coals and spend time in collective contemplation of the night sky. On the first day of the year, rather than a sacred bonfire, the residents of all nine inhabited islands gather in one place to mark the day of the first breath. Each year, a different island hosts a celebration as all Sapriu join in feasting and reenactment of the first breath of the world. Five months later, at the midpoint of the year, we observe the rotation of the smiths. Each year, three islands send a new smith to serve a three-year term on Zamo and welcome home the one who had been there for three years prior. This is marked by two days of festivals. The first feast occurs the day after the bonfire celebration as a send-off for the new smith. The following night is another feast to welcome home the smith who had been away. The siblings instructed the Sapriu according to each element they created. Pier taught us how to cultivate food for our nourishment and how to create fire. Like community, fire is a source of light and heat, and thus the community fire is the centerpiece of each Sapriu village. The fire must be kept burning continuously, a task shared by all on a rotating basis. 
But just as fire can cause damage if it burns too hot, so too can too much community. This is why Pierre also taught us about the importance of being spread across our nine inhabited islands. Similarly, human actions are able to create or destroy, just as fire can be used to help or to harm. Pierre revealed that evil stems from not properly tending the fire within and taught us to meditate together at dawn and dusk every day. Av taught us to cook using Pierre's fire and instructed us to follow our meditation with a communal meal prepared using the communal fire. Av also taught us to fish from the ocean, but also that seafood can only be consumed following great cooking times. Av also instructed us to never wade further than the shallow lagoons on the edges of our islands, lest the leviathans swallow us up. Tied as they are to the water, Av also taught us that storms are a time to stop work and gather together in meditation. This reminds us to pull together into community during times of adversity. Hill taught us to make gliders from the bogo tree and also to always respect life we take for food, fuel, or goods and never to take more than we need. The earth is the source of our life and produces most of our food, but we should never waste it. Hill taught us the proper preparation of the jugo, the only animal we may eat, but which we may only consume on the day of the first breath and the rotation of the smiths. Earth is also the element we turn to in times of crisis, when in distress, a smudge of mud or ashes in a line on the forehead will focus one's meditation, ground one in the strength of the siblings, and guide us to a solution to the problem at hand. Together, the siblings taught us the craft of metalwork and art, skills passed down from smith to smith, as well as the value of community and cooperation. Through them, we learned to make decisions via consensus, with all adults having a say in the outcome. While our smiths at home are respected community leaders, often sought to facilitate decision-making and arbitrate disputes, they never have absolute authority. Following Pierre's instructions to keep our population in check, lest we deplete our resources, even the decision to bear a child is made among all the village. When the timing is deemed right, a woman will bond with several men of her choosing over several nights, thus increasing her chances of pregnancy. These are, of course, not the only times adults bond with each other, but numerous contraception methods exist to prevent unplanned pregnancies. The Sapriu have maintained a population of roughly 3,000 across our islands for many generations. Fire is significant across the life cycle. When a woman becomes pregnant, she, along with her closest friends and all the potential fathers, build a new fire from raw materials. This is the birth fire, which is tended by all until the child's birth, at which point it is turned over into the community's fire, signifying the child is part of the community at birth. Three days after birth is the grounding ceremony. Births are great celebrations in which the entire village family gathers. A smith makes a small patch of mud, symbolizing the stability of the earth and the necessity of water. A small streak of this mud is placed across the child's forehead. The adults who tended the birth fire fashion the rest of the mud into a pot, kiln it, bringing in the necessary fire, and then fill the pot with water to wash away the now dried mud mark. During the creation of the pot, they discuss and decide on a name for the child, which is presented during the washing. In early adolescence, a Sapriu youth is sent to Zamo for a year to study with the smiths there and begin their passage into adulthood. Here, they enhance basic skills they've learned in fire tending, meditation, farming, fishing, and core spirituality. They are taught the rudiments of smithing and, with the help of the smiths, design and craft a branding iron. This brand is unique to each person, but incorporates elements of their home island. The final ritual before returning home is to be branded on the left forearm. At death, the body is placed atop a wood pile which is set ablaze from the communal fire. This pyre is allowed to burn to ash, and the ashes are later scattered into the farmland, completing the cycle of life.